Tactics of disinformation that we see on TikTok the most, and we have to admit, because if we know them, then we can pick them out, and then we won't fall victim to them, are things like fear. Fear works in trad media. Fear works really good on TikTok. And fear comes in a couple different buckets for me. One is a video that starts, no one is talking about this. Girl, people are talking about it, or you wouldn't know about it, right? Like, but it gets you. No one's talking about this. People seek secret knowledge. This is why they go to journalists. They want an inside scoop. They want to know it first. They want secret knowledge. There are bad actors who will present, no one is talking about this, and then say something that is just batshit bananas. <laughs> like, but you're already in the mindset of like, well, I should be questioning. I should be taking this in as like good faith discussion. Another way that fear is used is fear of not saying something. And we see this a lot with uh, social justice stuff. There'll be a certain thing that's happening. Let's take the killing of Masa Amini last year. And uh, some people will be talking about it. Other people maybe didn't hear about it yet. And then that person's getting dragged for not talking about Masa Amini yet. So now we've got fear, the fear of, that creators have of like not knowing what the next thing is that they should talk about. Because if they don't talk about it, people are going to think that they don't care. And we, we can't have that because our entire credibility is based on our authenticity and a lot of times our compassion. So there's this fear that governs a lot of TikTok to be first so that you're not somehow called out. Digital gaslighting, something that happens a little bit more on the right, where maybe somebody came out with a story and now it's changed a little bit. Instead of issuing a correction or just saying like, hey, we have new information and here's where we are now, they'll be like, no, I never, I never said that. You're wrong. That doesn't sound like something I would say. And that kind of thing not only creates distrust in your community, but it's so exhausting. It's exhausting to do that. Digital gaslighting also happens when people st stitch or duet your videos on TikTok and add context that was not in the original video, and this happens a lot, a lot of times. For me, it happens where, and I have to be careful in the way I craft a sentence, because if I can get somebody to stitch off just one little part of the sentence I said and then be like, oh my gosh, V hates frogs. And I'm like, V never said anything about that. V said frogs are on decline. And, they're, and, and you're glad that they are, right? Like, people will take what you say and they'll stitch it. That creates a little bit of digital gaslighting, trying to make it seem like you agree with their point of view or they're reinforcing what you said or they're putting words in your mouth that weren't there. That's something we have to fight on social media. Flooding. This happens in trad media, this happens on social media. Something is coming out, and somebody doesn't want that to be the main story. You think about like the Friday news dump, right? So when we don't want people to know stuff, we kick it in the late issue on Friday. Same thing with social media. It goes in the 7 o'clock news on Friday. People are already off. They don't care. And if they hear it, they're in a mentality to be like, that sucks. I'll deal with that Monday. And then they forget. This happens on social media when not bots always, but sometimes bots, will try to swarm around covering something by either flooding your comments or your duets and stitches or just videos with something else that's not true about the situation or trying to create another story. So an example of this that I would say is we know that there's a lot going on in the Middle East and that is the primary thing that we're talking about at time. Some people didn't want folks to be talking about that anymore, so they started to flood you with, well, why don't you care about the Sudan? That happened to everybody in here, I'm sure, right? I do, I care about both, but right in this exact second, I'm talking about the thing that's right in front of me, and then next I'll talk about how this is systemically an issue with imperialism or oppressor culture. But they, you'll get these bad actor people who come in and they try to make you feel like, again, you're behind, we're using fear, we're using flooding. And then all I saw for like three days was like everything about how we should boycott buying new electronics because that's actually the issue, not the Middle East, it's the electronics, right? And that's media manipulation, it happens everywhere, it happened on TikTok. Deep fakes and synthetic media. This is something that's becoming more of an issue and I think will certainly play out more on social media than in trad media because the Washington Post isn't gonna publish nude photos of Taylor Swift. But Twitter did, like, you know, AI generated fake photos. Um, there is legislation that they're trying to put together to combat AI and deep fakes. Uh, I don't know if our politicians fully understand the gravity or the way that they are working or like how this rolls out to legislate on it, but there's a lot of effort being put into this. And when it comes to synthetic media, you guys see this all the time, when it's like the Daily Courier said that Donald Trump is in fact Jesus, right? 
and they're like, well, my dad will send us. My own family does this. So he'll be like, babes. And I'm like, dad, that's not even a newspaper. He's like, it literally is a newspaper. I'm showing you. And we have to kind of go through, you know, is that real, is that not real? Synthetic media, problem for everyone. Conspiracy clickbait, unique to TikTok and social media. And that is people who, their goal is to be TikTok famous. Their goal is not to be a journalist or to be an educator or a community member. Their goal is likes and follows because that translates to dollars. And there's nothing that they won't do to kind of get to that like and follow equaling dollars thing. Good example of this is this week, there was a woman who went to a gay bar with her friend, and her friend was a straight male, and she's like, I don't know why it's a big deal that my straight male friend came to a lesbian bar. I mean, we were just trying to be allies, and then we got kicked out. Well, that makes you mad, right? You're like, oh, that's not fair. That's not what happened. This lady made up a crazy story, and then the more she got stitched, the more she stitched them back to say more crazy stuff, and she never cared that she was getting canceled because her likes and views were going up and up and up and up and up. A hate follow is a follow for some people. For me, it scares me, so I, I try not to do that, but for some people, it doesn't matter. And you'll see a lot of folks like that who just want to be TikTok famous, and they don't understand the difference between positive and negative attention, and they will flood and fill your time and your exhaust you with their nonsense. And then bullying and abuse. This goes back to the same idea of if you're not with me, you're against me and the tribalism of social media that can happen, can happen on the outside as well. But a lot of this that we see is folks, again, deciding that someone hasn't done enough as a creator, and they're going to absolutely bully and harass them to the end of the earth because they didn't do X, Y, Z thing in the way that I predicted that they would. A lot of being a creator is accepting people's projections on you and having to have enough of a center to be like, that's not true about me. That's not true about me, period. Why should I be so torn up that I can't sleep because some random person I've never met said that I was a paid shill for the DNC when I know that I'm not? I'm not, so why would, I, why would I respond to it? Why would I give it credence? Why would I be upset by it? Why would I feel betrayed by it? Why am I reading the comments in this crazy person's thing and just hurting my own feelings with other people's comments that say things like, yeah, there was always something sus about them. Why am I in here? I don't belong in here. This is not a place for me, right? So you have to be careful as a creator to read your comments, read your reviews and stuff, but take them with a grain of salt and recognize that sometimes people are just talking shit about you because they don't think you're gonna see it. How many times do I talk about like Kim Kardashian? I don't expect she's gonna see it. And if she did, I'd be like, I am actually so sorry. I think you're doing really great work with the police, right? So get curious about things you see on social media, but verify everything. Mm -hmm.